Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the approximation of the normal distribution to the binomial distribution. Now, before we start, I am assuming that you're familiar with both the normal and binomial distributions. If not, you do need to have a look at the tutorials on these. So, on that assumption, what we've got here is a typical binomial model. We've got in a game the probability of a coin landing in a particular square is 0.4. What is the probability that in 30 games the coin lands in the square fewer than 16 times? Well, to do this we would need to define a random variable. And so we would say something like let x be the random variable, number of times coin lands in the square. Where x is distributed binomially, we've got 30 trials and the probability of success p is 0.4. And if we were to work out the probability that x is less than 16, we'd start to do a sum like this. Probability x is less than 16 equals the probability that x is less than or equal to 15. And then we would go on and say, well, OK, that is going to be the probability that x equals 0 plus probability x equals 1 plus 2 and 3 and so on, all the way up to 15. And we would need to use this particular formula here to work out each of these individual probabilities. And that's going to take some time. So I've worked this out on a calculator before doing this question and it turns out to be 0 0.9029 and so on. So you can imagine a question like this is going to take an awful lot of time. Well it just so happens that providing certain conditions are met there is a shorter way of doing questions like this. I'll show you. Now those conditions that are that if x is distributed binomially with parameters np and np turns out to be more than 5 and nq is more than 5, remember q is 1 minus p, then x is approximately normally distributed with the two parameters for the mean which is np and the variance which is npq. And this only happens, not in all cases, but it only tends to happen if n is large and p is close to 0.5. Now if we were to look at the binomial distribution that we've got here, it would look something like this for this particular model. Now not all binomial distributions will have this kind of bell shape that we've got here. Only if these conditions are met. And they are. Look, I'll show you. We've got n times p is going to be n, which is 30, times p, which is 0 0.4. And that comes out to 12. And clearly, that's greater than 5. All right. What about nq? Well, nq is going to be 30 times 1 minus p, 1 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.6. And that comes to 18. So that's clearly greater than 5. So both these conditions are met. So to set up the approximate normal distribution, I need to work out what npq is. So we'll do that, npq. That's going to be 30 times p, which is 0 0.4, times q, which is 0 0.6. Work that out and you get 7.2. So we've got a variance of 7.2. So what we can say is that x is distributed normally with a mean of 12 and a variance of 7.2. And I would encourage you to write the word approximately behind it because otherwise you're saying categorically that x is distributed normally. It's not. It's only approximately normal. So when it comes to working out the probability that x is less than 16, let's just write it here. How do we go about it? 
So how do we go about it? Well it would mean adding up all the probabilities as we did earlier. That was probability x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 15. But because we're approximating this to a normal, normal distributions are continuous. They involve distributions with no gaps. And we've got gaps in our distribution as you can see in these spaces. So what we do is we imagine that they're filled in with bars of width one unit. So we draw one round the 16. This goes from 15.5 to 16.5. And then we draw another bar in from 15.5 to 14.5 and so on all the way back. Here they are, okay, just to save time. Now what we've got here is, can you see like this little bit of white space here? We can imagine that that white space is almost the same as this little bit extending outside the curve. And this is true for all of these pieces around the curve, okay? So we can approximate this by saying that, okay, we want the area essentially to the left of the 16. But there's a little bit more in it than just saying less than 16. We've got to use what's called the continuity correction. And by this, what we do is look at this value here. And I'm going to have to enlarge it because we haven't really got much room. To, but just imagine that we take our bar at 16. And we'll just draw it like this. Okay, it surrounds the 16 going from 15.5 to 16.5. And we've got our curve coming through this point up here. The red curve. Let's just draw that in. And we want the area to the left of 16, less than 16. Now because it's less than 16, we mustn't include the 16. What we do is we go up to just this edge here. Okay? And that edge is at 15.5. I'll just mark that in as 15.5. So because of this, what is called the continuity correction, the probability x is less than 16 turns out to be best approximated by x being less than 15.5. All right. Now this will change. These continuity corrections will change depending on whether you're less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, or actually equal to a particular number. And later on, I'll show you how you work with these continuity corrections. But essentially, once you've got this set up, the rest is straightforward. So we're just working out the probability x is less than 15.5. And in the usual way, we need to standardize this. This will be the same as the probability that z is less than the observed value, which is 15.5, minus the mean, which is 12, all divided by the square root of the variance. That would be the square root of 7.2. And if you work this out in your calculator, you'll find that that's the same as the probability that z is less than 1.3043 and so on. And depending on the tables that you've got, when you look this up, you should get a value that is around about 0 0.9032. But as I say, it might vary just slightly depending on the tables that you've got. Now, rounded up, that's going to be 0 0.9032. 9 to say two decimal places. Now earlier I did work out what the probability of x being less than 16 was, okay? The actual answer, that actual answer was in fact 0 0.9029 and so on. So you can see how well this compares to the answer here. So not bad as an approximation. Now I did say earlier that we need to look at uh, discussing continuity corrections. That is, remember we just worked out the probability that x was less than 16 and we had to transform it to working out the probability that x was less than 15.5, the area to the left of this bar here, 
which we had down here. Okay? But we could get other values to work out. I mean, for instance, what else could we have? We could have the probability that x is less than or equal to a particular number. Say that 16 again. How would we have handled that? Well, what we need to do always in these circumstances is just consider the bar surrounding the 16 or whatever value it is that you're working with. And it goes from 15.5 to 16.5. We want to be less than or equal to it. So we want to be to the left. So we come up with our shading like this, but we need to include the 16. So we now go into the bar and include that 16. But that takes us up now to the far edge of the bar at 16.5 in this particular example. So what we do is we apply a continuity correction and this transforms to working out the probability that x is less than the 16.5. And then we'll carry on in the normal way working out the calculation through the normal distribution. What else could you be asked? You could be asked to work out the probability that x is greater than a particular value. Let's suppose it was say the 10 here. How would we transform this? What would we think about? We would think about this bar surrounding the 10. Let's just draw a little sketch here. We'll put our 10 in. We've got our bar going from 9.5 to 10.5. But we want to be greater than 10. We want to be to the right of it. OK, over here. But we mustn't include the 10. So we need the area up to this edge here. And that edge is at 10.5. So with our continuity correction, this is the same as working out approximately x is greater than 10.5, that being our 10.5. You could have greater than or equal to. By now you most probably figured out what's going to happen. Suppose we wanted to be greater than or equal to a particular value. Say the 13 this time. How do we have done a continuity correction for that? I'd have thought about the 13 had my bar around it going from 12.5 to 13.5. I want to be to the right of 13, but greater than or equal to it. I've got to include that 13. So I now come into the bar, include the 13, and I'm working off this edge. This edge being 12.5. So this becomes the probability that x is greater than 12.5. What other things can we have? We could be asked to work out the probability that x equals a particular value. Say, the 7 maybe. How do we handle that one? Well, if you've got 7, again, I would think of my bar going round the 7, going from 6.5 to 7.5, but this time I need that area in there. And to work out that area, it goes from 6.5 to 7.5. So this is the same as working out the probability then that x lies between 6.5 and 7.5. So I hope that gives you some idea then of how we can apply the continuity corrections then to these problems. Don't forget them. They're so important. And I hope that's given you an idea overall then on how we can approximate the normal distribution to the binomial, providing these conditions are met. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.